I saw a cloud. You see a white mm. cloud. Mm. Oh my God, the beauty of heaven. Yeah. I'm just not sure if she's ready for heaven or she's ready for hell. What what the hell just just happened? Exactly. Kind of. So do you believe sure. that your brother was in hell? It's hot. Sissy, it's hot. It's very, very hot. Oh. I am burning. I am burning. There's no water. I'm thirsty. We have come to the conclusion that the spiritual world is definitely, more often than not, more real than the physical. And this is why today's episode is going to leave you astonished. Thank you so much for tuning in to Saint Twins TV right here on YouTube with myself, Innocent, and of course, my lovely twin sister, Millicent. We are on road to 300 thousand subscribers <laughs> and we know we can definitely do it with you clicking that subscribe button right here on youtube make sure you also interact like comment and of course share the video innocent where else can they listen to us to? all digital okay. social platforms we are on spotify apple podcast that's where you need to listen and make sure that you also leave your comment and your like let's get into our episode today welcome hi <laughs> Do you know, um, um, I need to tell you this. So basically, you know, we receive the emails and our yeah. team receives it. But this particular one, again, I was like, Millicent, this is a must have. It's <laughs> yeah. a must have. And I'm very, very excited that we could have you here mm. as a guest today. Please uh, briefly introduce yourself to our audience. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Kanyisa Mulungwa. Most people know me as Prophetess Kangisa Mulungwa. Mm -hmm. I am married to uh, Mr. Mulungwa and Dani Mulungwa. I am the founder of International Living Gospel Worldwide in Shukundu. I am a mother of four. Originally, I grew up in Cape Town. Um, you would say that I'm adopted. Uh, my mother's older sister adopted me from a very young age, me and my younger sister. And then after some time, we moved to Johannesburg, where we stayed in Midlands. From Midlands, then we moved to Ilim Butterfell. So you mentioned that you it's your mom, your adoptive mom, and your aunt. So how did that come about? Um, my aunt took me in, I think I was around about four months. Mm -hmm. and then she took me, we went to stay in Cape Town. And then later on, my younger sister also joined us. My aunt was unable to give birth. Um, she was barren. So she, 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 I think she saw how my mother was. Okay. You understand? My mother was that type of person who loved life. You understand? So mm. she, took, she took me in. How I found out, it's very interesting. Uh, I always, me and my sister always took our mother as an aunt or a sister. Mm. We okay. never. So you took your biological yeah. mother. Biological yeah, mother. Yes, so you didn't know that she's your biological like mother. Like a relative. Yeah, it's like a relative. Yeah. Like okay. if somebody, a, a child, when they grow up in the hands of an elder and <clears> you don't literally see your mother, yes. you don't, you, I had no. You don't even ask. Yeah, you don't even ask. The one who raises you, that's your yeah. mom. I used to call her mommy. I would call my aunt mommy. That is how I called them. Mommy, daddy. Okay. You understand? Yes. I, 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 that is how, how it was for mm. us. And then, um, unfortunately, when I was still at school, um, I was raped. Okay. So when I was raped, my aunt or... So you were how old? You were in primary or high school? I was in high school. I was during grade eight at that oh, time. Okay. Sorry. So sorry about that. Yeah. So they had to call her to come your biological they had mom. to call my biological okay. mother to mm. come to cape town mm. they sent her money she came to cape town and you know these family members family meetings mm. where they sat with her in a family and then yeah. they began to speak to her they said okay can you say is having this kind of challenge this and this happened to her mm. and uh, yes at first i was asking myself why are they telling her? her? Why do you need to discuss my issues with her? Mm. You understand? And then uh, my aunt, I remember how her exact words were saying, as her mother, what are you saying about Whew. this? You understand? My mom, or my biological mom, at that stage, 
she she was that kind of person who was a bit irresponsible mm. and then she would tell she told my aunt or my uh, adoptive mother that see what you do with her yo you understand that was my so full it was knowledge a cold yes yeah, it was kind of cold she, and she, that she, was your first experience hearing you are my biological mother and then you hear in the fact that she doesn't even care what no what she, we do. never had a relationship anyway Any, yeah I, mean, hmm. I i don't i don't remember having a relationship with her we don't have we didn't have a relationship mm. the relationship came about through my husband and through Women because of the men yes no, as i am now the reason why is that i i i i i i cut it to the point because of the pain and i was asking yes. myself maybe something was wrong with me mm. Mm. you understand so i had cut it out when i when after i met my husband my husband i think he realized that there's something wrong between these two Yes. And also ministry ministry wise the 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 the, the holy spirit will always minister to me that mm, I will not m- use you <laughs> to your full potential because yeah, you sure. can't forgive her. Yo. Yeah. You understand? So that is how I found out about her. Mm. You understand? And growing up from african cultures or african families do you really I have can do you have a power to ask questions or they will slap no. you? No. Yeah, no. Yeah, you don't ask. Just leave it. Yeah, you don't mm. ask. You just leave it. You, you just don't question. You, yeah. There's no questioning yeah. in Africans. Uh, no. you, you don't ask. It's disrespectful. You understand? Mm. But that alone destroyed me and yes. it destroyed a part of me. And also, I think also my younger sister. It mm. also yeah. hit her. Uh, uh, you understand? Um, how did we build a relationship? I think I built a relationship when. I started growing in the ministry. Yeah. Because I I I I I didn't have a space for her anywhere. As a mother, a mother is supposed to protect their children. Mm. Yeah. As a mother, you sacrifice. Mm. You understand? I didn't have a motherly um relationship. Yes, yes. Yeah. I I can't I, there was no way I can relate with her. I don't know how to explain it. This mm, is difficult yeah. for it's me difficult, to relate. It's difficult. Yeah. I yeah. I mean I get it completely. You know when yeah. someone didn't raise you, 100% get you. I mean, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So sure. that was how it all came around, but yeah. for me it never changed my relationship with my adoptive one, my sister. Uh, so are you still, still close? close? She passed away 2 weeks back. Ah, yeah. Which two weeks? It's two, two weeks. weeks. Yes, recently. Oh, she just passed oh, away. So sorry. Yeah, she passed away. She passed away. <laughs> Yo, that's like your mom passing away yes, for you. Yeah, it was a big hit for me. Yes. Yeah, it was a big hit because what happened is that the day she passed away is the day I gave birth. I've got a newborn. <gasps> I what? <went> to <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> yeah, I've got a newborn. We've got a baby boy. A two week old baby. Yeah, he's, he's now. These four weeks, four, four to five oh, weeks now. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. oh, it's so cute. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Oh, Thank you. Word. Yeah. So wait, you gave birth on the day. Yeah. When when she got the stroke, I went straight into labor. Yo. Yeah. And then when she passed away, or let's say her spirit left her, I gave birth. Yo. Wow. Yeah. Bittersweet moment. I, I, it was weird because you, you don't know if you what have to you, rejoice. Because yes. yeah. even my in-laws, they don't know if they must rejoice with me or must Yay. they cry with me. Uh, <laughs> it was like it was, a, it was yeah. a phase of confusion. Even my husband, because he was the one going up and down, I still yes. had an operation. He, nobody knew what to how they must approach me. Congratulations. Oh. Or, how do you say that? What do you say? <laughs> sure. Yeah, what do you say? Congratulations for the baby. Well, my so. condolences, I understand. Um... Mm. I'm also, uh, we have also got an orphanage in Shikundu. I've got plus, minus, 10 to 15 sons and daughters, which are pastors, Yo. which I've ordained. Uh, yeah, so the ministry is going well and everything is going well. I'm, uh, uh, most people say that I've got a very unique gift, if I can say that. Mm. Um, I'm very, I even sometimes fear myself because I, you, I <laughs> tend to not understand what is going on with me. Yeah. So uh, at Shkundu, they call me the eagle. Mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I've just found myself getting that nickname called the Eagle of Shukun. So the Eagle has landed today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And one thing about eagles, you know eagles can see, right? Eagles yeah. see. So I'm excited Clearly. to hear what you have to say and how you obtained the name of the Eagle. Tell yeah. us more. Well, my gift or my calling started at a very young age. Um, from the age of six I could say from the age of six, I, 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 my mom, my family realized that something was wrong with me because, um, you know, when you're growing up, your mom wants to discipline you. The family wants to, dis I was very naughty. I was really? extremely <laughs> naughty. So I used to steal my mother's sweets, the chips in the house, <laughs> the biscuits. So my mother got to the stage where she, I'm talking about my adoptive mom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She got to the stage where she used to hide everything in the house. She would take the sweets and then she would hide them away. And I already knew that the, that the, these sweets are somewhere, it's either in the cupboards or in the bedroom. So what I would do, I would stand in my mother's room, close my eyes. I literally would close my eyes. Yeah. After closing my eyes, I would go to where the sweets are. Yo. It doesn't matter where it was or what she hid, whatever it is, I would find it. And you would know exactly where it is. I would know exactly it's where like it is. It's like superpowers. Yeah. You know when you used to watch those movies, yes. you just close your eyes and then instantly you've got the answer. Was it something like that? <sighs> You could say something like that. Yeah. Like I would, li I would just oh. picture. It was like it would come to me as a form of a picture or okay. a, a sound of a voice, a very soft voice that would say bed. You understand? Wow. It would be very soft, or it would come to me as pictures. You understand? Or it would look like it's something that I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You understand that that yeah. small okay. silent voice that you think. Yeah. It would come as like something that I'm thinking, and I'll go for that voice. And then I'll go and search for it. And this thing went on and on <laughs> to a point where it actually scared my mom. Uh, I grew up, my family's Christian. Okay. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Christian family. But because of the episodes and things that were happening within me, mm -hmm. uh, it scared her. She even took me to a traditional healer. So Ooh. since you are so in touch with, you know, say the spirit world, so do you have control over that? For example, let's say your mother now passing mm. away. Mm. Do, can you access like, do, can she visit you or can you speak to her or can you see when she's dying or you don't control that? It literally happens randomly. Sometimes, yes, I can see it because okay. with her, I think it was four to five months prior. Uh, her husband passed away before her. Mm. So he passed away, I think, in 2024 now. He passed away mm. in 2022. Okay. Yeah. So I was sleeping. I saw him come to me mm -hmm. holding a suitcase. Mm -hmm. And in the suitcase, he took me to their bedroom where they are sleeping. Yes. And then he said to me, pack the bags. I'm like, where are we going? Yo. And he says, not your bags. Pack your mother's bags. Ah. So I said, where is she going? And then he said... Take the blankets, <sighs> take everything and begin to pack the bags. And then I remember him standing there and then he said to me, I'm just not sure if, he's re if she's ready for heaven or she's ready for hell. And then I woke up. Goodness, I'm just like having chills. I'm just like, what? Uh, how do you, and when you wake up, like, what do you do? I think I would, I would be so So did you tell her? I told my husband. I didn't tell her. Yo, hey, I didn't tell her. Because you couldn't make sense of the dream. Yeah, I couldn't make sense of the dream. Sometimes I can't make sense of the dreams. It's different when I see them come yeah, than when yes. I'm dreaming about them. Oh. And, yeah. When I see them come, it's different. Um, when I dream about them, it's usually it's a bit confusing. But if I, if she came to me or she comes to me like this and she's just, there she talks it's like a, it's like me and you talking yeah like this you understand i think on many accounts my family members have heard me say is it ah okay what do you want me to do about that okay yeah <laughs> yeah like mm. I, I once heard my pa one day ask me mama who are you talking to <laughs> i'm <sighs> like ah, this one here then they they used to me now sure let's 
go back a little bit. So when did she realize that? Okay, how old were you when she realized this is this this is not just a coincidence anymore? Because yeah. you know you yeah. you could just a be a, a child that's just you happen to be lucky or happen to be fortunate. You you know there's this little guesses about the sweets, but then it probably doesn't become about the sweets anymore. Uh-uh. So what happened for your mom to find that situation alarming? I had episodes. Okay, for one, um, let me just say one scenario. I was in Cape Town. When we were in Cape Town, my aunt, she was based in Guiani. She was sick at that time. I was lying on my bed. I think I was around about 10 to 11 years. I was very young. I was lying on my bed and I saw a cloud. You see, a white mm. cloud. And I looked at my aunt. She looked so beautiful. I can't, I can't explain the beauty yeah. that, uh, that I saw in her. She looked so beautiful. And then she said to me, she said it to me in Tonga. She said, mm. And then I stood up. I went to the room and I told my, uh, my aunt's husband, who was yeah. my adopted father at that time. And I said to him, you know, I just saw auntie. And then he said to oh me, how? And I said, she came to me and then she told me, that I must tell you that she has left. Within five to six minutes after that, the call came in from Guiani. No oh. way. Just to say that auntie has passed away, that she's gone. My oh. aunt or my stepmother at that time, I think it was like, what? What the hell just just happened? Exactly. Kind of. Kind of. And you are 10 to 11. You are a baby. I was still very young. I was still very, very young. I was having the weirdest of, of, of things happen to me. And that alone triggered my family because okay. it wasn't that episode only. Mm. Um, I remember at, uh, at one stage in Karanghuhu in Zone 8, where mm. my, my grandmother's house was. Yeah. Uh, that episode, I think I was around about 15, if not 16 years. There was a funeral on the road yeah. on, in the same street. street. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know that the man there had passed away. I went out. I was going out. There's this uh, quarter tuck shops that I used to like going to. Mm. And then I told myself that I'm going to buy myself a quarter. When I came out, I met with the man that I supposedly had passed away. Oh. And he said to me, <laughs> And I'm like, I'm okay. We had a normal conversation. He was talking to me. I was talking to him and I was normal. I didn't know he had passed away. Then after that, my mother, I think she Wait, heard so me. So you are talking to a spirit at this point. Yes, I'm talking to somebody. But in human flesh. In human flesh, they look, to me, when they come to me, they look like how you are just standing yes. here to me. You understand? And then we were talking. Sure. He was just asking me, how's things going? How's school? You understand? Because at that time now, uh, I was still in Cape Town. We were moving in and out. Mm. Okay. How school? I'm like, everything is fine. And I was talking. So my mother heard me talking outside. Yeah. But when she heard me talking, she did not, it's like she did not hear a response. It's as if okay. I was talking to myself. Yeah, so she can only hear you, uh -huh. but not the person that's talking to you. Exactly. Okay. And uh, you can hear me laughing. And there's nobody laughing with me. So I went inside. And then my mother said, man. And then I told her who I was talking to. And then she f she literally turned from a black woman to a white person. <laughs> yeah, because what? <laughs> what? She, <laughs> she turned from a black woman into a white person within seconds. And then she sat down. And then she said, Can you say, Kumbala? And then I told her, and I said, why? <laughs> and then she's like, ah, that person passed away last night. What are you talking about? You. I'm like, no, I was standing with him. We were talking. And I even told him where I was going. Yo. This is not the first episode. So I'm sure why your mother then now took it very seriously. Yeah. Like, no, there's something here. Sure. Yeah. She took it. It was it, it was a wake up call because mm. she called my my aunt, uh, my stepmom at that time, my, my what is it, adoptive mother at yes. that time, and she said, "I'm having problem with Kanisa. Mm. I don't know what is wrong with this child, or whatever the case may be, but we need to do something about this child." Mm. And then at that time, uh, my adoptive mother also told her of what she has encountered with me. And then she would say mm. to me, Kanisa would say things, and then tomorrow it would happen. 
because I would say okay. to her, yeah. So she would almost confirm yeah. Yeah. that when she was with me, she, she actually had a lot of things that were, you know, mm. I guess supernatural. After that, my mother took me to a traditional healer. <laughs> if I, the story that it took place in that place, I will never forget. You were how old? Uh, that time I was still 15, 16, okay. around mm -hmm. about that time. She took me to a traditional healer around zone nine. We went there. They didn't tell me where they were taking me. Mm. When we got there, okay, fine. There was a line. I was asking myself, what, what is going on? Where am I here? <laughs> and then um, they told us to take off our shoes. I took off my shoes. I was following my mom. And we entered. When we entered, that woman took uh, this thing. They, they put the bones the boy, okay, the, okay, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. She threw them on the, on the ground. And then she told my my mother, get out. Hey. She told her, get out. What did she see? I don't know. She said, get out. I cannot touch her. I can't do anything to her. Yo. Get out. Wow. Matiba, we were she's my mother's busy taking those she, she had tied something. Yes. Uh, yeah. um, she's busy taking those things, trying to pull me out. And he's like, get out. Get out. We went out. And then we walked back home, but we were so silent. Hmm. Because I'm sure in her mind, she's asking herself, what, what is, is wrong? Yes. What is this? You understand? So I guess your gift was so massive that maybe she couldn't contain it. Or whatever she saw, she just could, she couldn't handle. Mm. I mean, we can only assume at this point, mm. but clearly mm. there was something far greater that you had yes. inside yeah. of you that yes. she saw mm. this is not even in you know in my caliber yeah mm. that's true um they couldn't understand i also couldn't understand myself mm. because i remember there was a stage i literally went into depression mm. why did i went into depression i was uh, there was uh, times where i would uh I had been involved in three different accidents with friends. Mm. All my friends passed away. <gasps> I remained. Oh then there was no. another scenario in Aldorado Park where we were involved in a hijacking. <laughs> Everybody got shot. The bullet passed me through the corner of my eye like this. Whew. Nothing. I came out with not even a scratch on my body. Not even a scratch. Wow. <sighs> so, as time went by uh, uh, in the section, there, you know, um, so wait till so how wait, it is. So wait, in the car accident, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So since everyone died in the in the car accident, mm -hmm. did you have an encounter with any of the people that were dead? The Your only friends. The friends. Yes. No, they did not come to me. Okay. You understand. Okay. Um, what I learned with all these encounters mm -hmm. of the dead, mm -hmm. most of them will come to me as if some of them, like my uh, my brother who passed away, mm -hmm. he came to me with fire, saying to me, it's hot. Yo, Where yo. I am, it's hot. Sure. So see, I am burning, it's hot. And then he said to me, I am with our family members here and we are oh. burning, it oh is hot. Goodness, that is scary. I'm just like, what? Whew. You understand? It, it, I think it... it I don't know what really pushes them to come. I would be lying when to you. When did your brother come? How long How long had it been since he had passed? He passed away, let's say, um, it was, it's been two to three years now. Mm -hmm. He passed away, it was during the week, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. And before they buried him, he came. You understand? Were you not scared? I think God does something to me. When these things come, I don't feel fear. Okay. You understand? I, I, I can't really explain yes. it. Mm. When when they come, I don't literally feel fear. Yeah. Mm. You understand? Okay. The only time I'll, I will feel fear is when it's a demon. Okay. okay. You understand? A so demon, you can feel the spirit is different. Yes. I yeah. could feel, you can feel. It's like God brings a sense of covering. Yeah. A sense of warmth to you. Okay. A sense of protection. It's like a, there's this thing that says, I am with you. Don't yes. be afraid. Okay. Kind of uh, uh, a feeling. So when he came to me, he said to me, I am burning. Mm. It's hot so where before, I am. So before he passed, mm -hmm. so, so, so you said you had an encounter with him before. Like, was it a few days after he had passed? 
It was a few days after he had mm. passed. Oh, that's when he said he's that burning. That is when he came to me and he told me, before I the am funeral. burning. Yes, before the funeral. What break. were you doing? <gasps> Take us through your day. How did you respond? Did he come through the door? Did he, <laughs> like how? You know, I'm not going to act like we hear this every day. <laughs> I mean, wow. Did uh, he walk in and he's just like, what are just you doing here? Most of the time, um, they usually like to find me in a relaxed state. Mm-hmm. You understand? Maybe I'm lying down. Or I'm just sitting. And then um, sometimes I do feel the presence is coming. Mm. Um, if it's a holy presence, like maybe it's somebody that passed away who knows Jesus Christ, um, was born again. I literally feel anointing. Wow. My body will become goosebumps. You understand? Yo. And you can feel that there's a heavy anointing that is coming here. Mm. I will feel that presence that, no, this is something holy that is coming to me or is coming with a message or whatever the case may be. But if it's something that the person went to hell, people need to know hell is real. Hmm. I'm like, what? Hell is so real. Hmm. Hell is real. It's something that I tell my husband every sure. day and the church members. I said to them, do not be deceived by how you're living your life. Yeah. Hell is real. Mm. I've seen the hell. I've seen the fire of hell. It's there. It, it's not yeah. something that yeah. is it, it's, it's an imaginary something was yes. written in the book of Revelation. It's there. You understand? So when he came to me, I felt heat. My wanna, when you switch on the heater, yes. <laughs> there's that f- the feeling mm-hmm. of warmth yes. all of a sudden. And then after that, sure. that warmth became hotter Mm. and hotter Mm. and then i saw him appear when i saw him appear when i looked at where he was standing Mm. behind him it was like a volcano it was like there's a volcano behind him like uh, uh, i don't know how to explain it was just like there was um valka coming out what is what did what you call that thing from volcanoes Lava, Lava. yeah. Yeah, It's like lava was coming out. And you can see him, that way he's standing behind him, Mm. there's heat. And he did this. He came to me and he did this. As if he wanted to touch his hands. And he's like, it's hot. It's hot. Sissy, it's hot. It's very, very hot. I am burning. I am burning. There's no water. I'm thirsty. You understand? It's hot. Tell them. Go and tell them. Tell them. Tell them at home that this place, they must not come. It's hot. Oh. It's very hot. And uh, mm. I don't know how God does it, but he does not allow me to ask them a question when they're in hell. It's like there's a secret, something sure. like that. With mm. that. But all he was saying to me, that it's very hot. Mm. It's hot. So you can't even you can't converse. Even have a conversation. Some I can have a conversation okay, with okay. them. But there are some of them, it's like there's a, uh, 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 there's a secret. Mm. which God only can reveal. I don't know how to explain it. It's very secretive about where he is or or about what is happening in the spiritual Mm. life or whatever. But he, when he, when there are times, yes, they will talk to me, Mm. uh, especially when they are in heaven. Okay. And also when they are still in the process of crossing over. Crossing yes. over, sure. That's an inner conversation completely. Yeah. But but tell me this. So do you believe sure. that your brother was in hell? Yes, I do, and I know he's in hell. Sure. Not him alone, some family members. I know they're in hell. Because he confirmed also He that confirmed and he told members. me. Yeah. He told me that I'm not alone here. Go and tell our family to find Christ. Sure. To be born again. Wow. You tell me, like, it's not, it's, it's, it's useless, the life that we are living. Because after when we die, the spiritual side is completely different. Yeah. You understand? You tell me, go and tell them. This place so is did expensive. you tell them? I told my mom. I told my late uncle before he passed away. Was your mm-hmm. mom sad though? Or um, your brother? I don't know if I could call it sad. Mm. It's uh, my my brother did not live the best life. You mm. understand? Um, he was smoking. He was doing. He was living his own life. You understand? Yeah. Um, he, he 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 was not born again. I remember mm. we had come this time. Let's go to church. Mm. I'll go next week. Kind of thing. Mm. You understand? Um, he, he was that kind of person who would debate everything about Jesus Christ. Mm. <laughs> everything is a debate. He will yeah. debate about the Bible. The Bible is written by a man. I'm like, is it? Kind of thing. Yeah. I, yeah, he was that kind of person. So 
to her it was like okay i know about heaven and i know about hell so it mm. means that uh, this thing is actually real Yay. kind of things you understand and um, it did push me to a limit where i tried to push my family into christianity mm. because you see these things and you do not want them Yay. to go there you understand? Sure, I can imagine. Oof, mm. That is so hard. Yeah, you 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 try to push them into Christianity, but you cannot really force a donkey yes, to drink water from the well. You can't. You understand? So, it, you know, mm. there's something about God. He has a way of comforting you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He does comfort. Because yeah. with those kind of things that I've seen, especially when it's family related, mm. you it's supposed to traumatize me, yes. break me, but instead it's so personal. It's mm. very personal. Yes. It's very personal, but he comforts. He comforts me. You understand? He really does comfort mm. me. And the 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 great part of what I how I motivate myself all the time about these things mm. is that. You know what? Okay, yes, I see hell is real. <laughs> I can see demons. Yeah, they are mm. real and they are like roaming around here. Yeah. Mm. I understand that. But the other side is that, oh my God, the beauty of heaven. Yes. Come on. Yes. Heaven. I've not, I've not seen it with the, uh, uh, the whole place. Yeah. yeah. But those small bits that I've, I, I was graced to see through these people or through these angels. Yeah made me there was a point I, I used to say that sometimes i feel like it's useless to live mm. compared to where we are going wow you understand the grass is green but it's not just like a dull kind of green Come yeah. on. it's a lively kind of green yeah. sure. that is, is you're going to actually think that the flowers are talking to you kind of Yo. it's wow. beautiful okay now tell, this Ooh. is what i'm curious about right so from what we know and have seen with people who have these uh i don't know what to call them special encounters with people who the have afterlife. either passed away and so forth they would label you are a medium you are this Good. and of course like mm. i also understand why your parents would take you to a sangoma because they would associate it to those kinds of callings mm -hmm. right and then as a christian then they would say don't talk to dead people because Good. it's like they it's evil or it's demons or mm. whatever or uh cast them away or chase them away yes. in jesus name or how like yeah <laughs> how I do love, you navigate through that i love that you asked me that question because that alone was one of my biggest challenges mm. you understand it's challenged me to such a point i asked myself i remember i even wanted to stop preaching sure. because it tested it tested my belief. Yes. I'd research the Bible. And then one day um I was reading the book of Luke 9 verse, verse 30 to 31 where Jesus was talking um where Jesus was talking I think it was Moses and Elijah. Mm. You understand? And these people had passed on. It was before Jesus was crucified. Mm. Moses and Elijah came to him. And then I asked myself if this is possible with Jesus. Mm. He never summoned them. Yeah. The problem is when you Cause, summon. Yeah. Yes. You understand? Yes. The problem is now when you are summoning them. Yes. You are worshipping them. them. Mm. You understand? Because you're saying they've got some sort of power. They've got some sort of power. Of, yeah. yeah. Mm. The problem is when you're summoning them. You understand? And then I read about that. And then I said to myself that those people appeared to him. Why is that not demonic? Mm. I asked myself that question. Yeah. You understand? Mm. And then... I said to myself, okay, I see uh, 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 people, like even sometimes servants of God that passed away. And I said, if servants of God come to me and, 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 and talk to me, is that demonic? And mm. if people come to you from heaven, is that demonic? Is that demonic? Because you can mm. feel like this, is, this person is, is peaceful. Yeah. But also they, they come to... Like, I'm trying to get the motive as well. Like, yeah. when they come to you, like, what's the reason? Is it is it to... The message? Is it to portray a certain message? Is to, like, what is... Because obviously they're not just saying hi and bye. Mm -mm. Like, why would somebody, especially if not even related to you, mm. come to you? Sometimes you find that somebody comes to me to tell their family to wake up and pray. <laughs> I've had encounters where uh, a man that passed away in Shikundu mm. told me, 
that tell my wife to pray because there are demons or there's the enemy is roaming around close to her and she is sleeping when she's supposed to be praying yo Sure. You understand? Sometimes yeah. they come to me just to bring a message. Mm. Sometimes they come to me to, some of them have even come to me to tell me how, why they died. <gasps> or if somebody killed them, if they're, they're is a responsible sure. through witchcraft. Really? Or yes, I've had encounters <gasps> with that. And what do you do with the information? Uh, sometimes I pray about it. Uh, it's not easy to go to somebody and say, I just saw your late husband. Yes. And I'm sure these are, but, but these are things that people are curious about, like, especially cause of death, because some people mm. really do pass away without any explanation, but there is a reason. It's just that the reason is not revealed. Yeah. Mm. And then they come to you with the reason, obviously, because they know the family is puzzled. Yeah. Yo, what And a then wow. you have to go and I try to explain to that. Because <sighs> I remember at one <sighs> state in, um, in Shkundu, <laughs> I've been through a lot. I tried to help a family. This guy just passed away uh, suddenly, you mm -hmm. understand? Um, not even him alone, many. And I went to them and I said to them, you need to pray, you understand? You need to pray because this and this happened. This person was, it was it's, it's witchcraft. He mm. was killed. I even saw what he saw. Like, so I literally saw a video of how the accident took place happened. and what he saw before it happened. Oh, you yeah. understand? Him taking the car mm. and moving it, everything. He showed me what he saw when this thing took sure. place. Like, you understand? <laughs> I know. It's so too much. Like, like, oh, my God. I'm just like, I'm not even saying this anything anymore. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a movie to me every day. Um, so when he told me this thing, I went to the family. I went to, I thought maybe, um, closure. yeah, I can give them closure. Mm. And I told them that, you know what, you need to, to up the gear, prayer, go to the mountain fast to do something about this. Mm. You understand? Okay, it was fine. And then after some time, there was a rumor moving around Shikundu that I am the one killing people. Mm. You understand? Because now they're saying you've got these superpowers. How, you know? How do you know? How do I know? Yes. You understand? Yes. She's the one killing. She's the one responsible for this person's death. Oh, so you started the, holding back. I started holding back. Yes. You understand? But recently, uh, one of the people who was saying those things came to me and she told me that she had a dream. And then when she had a dream, um, she dreamt the relative come to her mm -hmm. in the dream and tell her that Kanyisa did nothing wrong. Mm. You understand? And they, she came back and she told me. Yeah. And then she apologized. And I said, it's fine. It is not, it's not easy to go and tell somebody that this is what I saw. Yes. You understand? Yes. Because even myself on a personal level, I remember when dad passed away. I thank God, Kori, uh, my sister and my cousins also heard this. We he passed away and it was the day before the funeral. Mm. Dad used to knock on everybody's doors before we slept to check that we have not slept out of the window. So he would <laughs> knock <laughs> <laughs> he would knock on the doors. <laughs> hey, sir? Yeah. Hey, go. Check it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are here. You understand? So he, that was like a daily thing for him. Every yeah. night he would do that. He would knock on the door. <laughs> and sometimes he would just open the door. Yeah, the stand, and he would just look at us to see we were still there. So that it was the day before his burial. It was at night. I was sleeping with my younger sister and uh, my cousin. Her yeah. name is also Mkateko. We were sleeping there. And then they had no. they had it no they had it themselves stop and i because Did you come to knock <laughs> no oh way <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> and they heard the footsteps they heard at first i felt the presence because remember before i they come i can feel, feel the presence it. and then they heard Gum. he loved wearing um these formal shoes these big formal shoes with yeah. the sole those old type of shoes with the formal <laughs> and you can hear him go Gum from the passage our passage is wooden <laughs> like this <laughs> our passage is like wood like this <laughs> that is crazy <laughs> so they heard goop, 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 and there was a pause there was a pause in the first room 
You understand? That was the room I used. Yes, you can hear the stop. And that is where uh, I would sleep. So that day we all slept in one room. And then they had had a very soft, like somebody's knocking on the door. And then Mkateko, my cousin, she shook me. And then she says, can you, sir? Can you, sir? What is that? I'm like, why are you asking me? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> like you would know. Yeah, what, what do you mean? What is that? And she's like, did you hear what I'm hearing? And yeah. then we all, literally the whole room, quiet. quiet. And then we heard the steps again. Coop, yo, coop, yo. Coop, coop. And he paused outside our room. And that pause, you see a dead silence, that, that, that dead kind yes, of no one pause. Anything. Nobody is saying anything. We are just waiting for either the door to open <laughs> or, or to, go, to go, go, go. <laughs> or one of those things to take place. And it's like he knew that we were waiting yes. because you can feel the presence. Everybody yes. felt it. It wasn't not me with my third crazy yes. eye or yeah, anything like, at I'm that time. crazy. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm not crazy today, guys. <laughs> And then you can hear the dead silence. Everybody just kept quiet. And we were all looking at each other. And everybody's looking at me for answers. And I don't have answers at that moment. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> <laughs> and then all you heard was, Gok, Gok, ah. Gok. Everybody took their black hat. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody went under the blankets <laughs> and they were all silent. <laughs> what did you say? I had nothing to say. You just She's kept used to it. Go I'm you used mean? to it. I'm used to it. Yes, sometimes it's freaky. I won't lie to you. You understand? <laughs> and then there was another encounter while we were talking about this. I have a son. His name is Joshua. Yeah. I named him Joshua. So Joshua at the time when my dad died, he was mm. still a bit young. I think it was four years so after the funeral took place, everything was fine. You know, they washed the blankets and yes. the aunts and, and everybody's washing the blankets. Later n- at night, everybody, oh, dad was somebody where we all sit in the sitting room, we'll talk. So mm. after his death, everybody would just go to their rooms. Yeah. Okay. So my son, Joshua, and um, my other son, my older son, Kulani, decided to go to the sitting room. Yeah. Dad used to sit on a couch like this. He loved this very soft one couch. Yeah. He never sat on the long couches. He yeah. loved this couch specifically. Yeah. So my son went to the sitting room. When you go to the sitting room, you, you see those walk-in kitchens? It's like yes. a walk-in kitchen and it's joined by the sitting room. Mm. Okay, or open some plan. Yeah. Open plan, yeah. good. Yeah. So when he was passing, he saw dad sitting on the couch and then he did a reverse <laughs> your son <laughs> my son my four year old son he did a reverse and he came back and he came back <laughs> reverse I don't know why he was reversing but he came back reverse and he said mama mama go 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 and then I'm like go go he said yeah oh my goodness you understand and then my older son came out he's like that is impossible that is impossible <laughs> you are talking nonsense that is there's no such thing as that and then my son went with my younger son there. I was just relaxed. Like, yes. uh, come on, it's like a daily dose of vegetables, this thing. Yeah. You understand? And then they went. My son, you see the sit? Yes. He did not see the presence. He did not see him. Yeah. But he saw the sit like this. As oh, I like see. Someone is sitting, sitting. the way. Yes, yes, the way. So you can see the, yes. the yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. see the chair yeah. is like this. Because it's, uh, it's those leather... Yes. Leather okay. couches. Yeah. So he could see the seat was like this, down like this. And then he called out my name. I think he froze. So this is the sun that was like, this is impossible. This is impossible. Okay. So he froze. What did and you do to your kids? <laughs> <laughs> so he froze. And then he yeah, froze. Also. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran because I'm asking, maybe they saw a snake, you know, Kaya yes. and Limpopo. And then I went there, and when I went there, he said he just did this. <laughs> the son. Yeah, Kulani. Aww. Kulani just did this to me. Aww. He's like, Joshua's like, I told you. <laughs> I told you, yeah, that kind of thing. Sure. And I just did this. And I didn't see his presence. I just saw yes. oh, 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 that he's yeah. sitting there. And then when I, I, I said, Papa, and then I saw the seat relax. It's as if it was coming up with me. He was rising. Okay. You understand? He was rising. And then we could all <laughs> hear a sign of the thing was two or three steps from away the couch. Yeah. Like one, two, three, and then it was a it's like it disappeared after that. Oof. 
you know, we have ran out of time, but <laughs> I have so many questions because same here. You spoke so about many. the the the. Um, you know, there's this that transition period as well, mm. where it, it's like it's 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 like somebody's is is crossing over. Crossing yes, over. it's a crossing mm-hmm. over part, and and there's people who die because their their souls are stolen yeah. from by people so that they can be used, use be them used. Mm-hmm. for evil use. You know, mm. um, I think they call it uktebula, yeah, uktebula, you know, the uktebula and all those things. Uliwa. I want to talk about that, but I really think you need to come back for a part two. And also, if you can start, about the heaven experience, listen, you spoke listen, about the hell. If we can about it, if <laughs> yeah. we're going to start now, we're not going to finish now. I know. I think it, it obviously needs so much explanation. Yes. But... You know, I love my heaven stories, right? <laughs> you love your heaven <laughs> stories. So you must give me something about heaven before Just we Just one thing. And um, then you definitely coming back for a part two because we have so many questions. Yeah. But I think the nice thing with the part two is well, we're going to give the viewers an opportunity to also ask their to questions. Ask their questions. Yeah. But I have a book full because I'm like, what? Yeah. And do people often ask you about their family members as well? Like, can you yes, see my my grandmother? Can you see my mom? Can you connect? Yeah. Do, are they fine? Mm. Are they okay? Yeah, they do. They do ask me, and most of the time, I tell them that I'm not a medium. Mm. They come to me. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll you tell them. You don't go knocking at I will not go yes. knock. I've seen hell, and I do not want to enter it. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. I do not want to knock because. So don't consult, guys. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of situation. Because those things attach to you. Yeah. Yes. They attach to you. They attach to your family. So dealing with a, 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 a dead person who mm. does not want to get out of your house, it's very not, it's not a nice thing. Okay. Yeah, it's not a nice thing. Sure, I think we need to wrap it up. Yeah. I think let's yeah. wrap it up. I think there is so much. I want to start on other things, but I've just, I have to control <laughs> myself because of time constraints, right? On this particular episode. But now I understand why, you know, I guess you called uh, into the prophetic because mm. that is your prophetic gift yeah. to be able to discern, to see, yeah. to have that spiritual eye. Yeah. I cannot even imagine what happens in your ministry. I think it's absolutely amazing. I'm curious what you have imagine to say. Right her husband but goes through and he kids right because what a film <laughs> what, what a, a movie, movie. <laughs> Um, I can't so, wait to read your comments. Please let us know what you think on the comment section below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and also share this video. We are on the road to 300k subscribers. And we see those subscribers who are new on the channel. We love you and we appreciate you right here on YouTube. Yeah, and thank you for listening to you know the audio platforms. I think it's always so nice for me when I drive to work or I drive anywhere and I listen to the podcast. Um, you know, it's just honestly like so so refreshing to hear, especially testimonies, life changing stories, and of course we are known for the spiritual things because they <laughs> definitely exist. Prophetess, yes. uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are like hey, amazing. I've never I'm, felt goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> beginning to end. <laughs> I, I, I was I just like, know what to do? Yeah, no. Like, I mean, wow. when I tell you, like, yeah, it's just like you, you. You can feel it. You. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you so come back you. for a part two. I'm here. With we are you. asking you before you even leave. <laughs> I'm here <laughs> with you guys. I know our emails are going to be flooding. Yeah. Thank you so much. We cannot wait to have you again for part two. Thank you at home for watching. Um, until the next one for myself, Millicent. And myself, Innocent. And uh, Prophetess K and of course the rest of the I've been through the most team <laughs> that is behind the camera. So it is a <laughs> Bye goodbye. <for> now. <laughs>